The Lutetium Project's Microfluidics Adventures, third and last chapter. In the first two videos, we explained why the size of micrometric systems made them interesting and how those systems were built. Now, let's see what we can do with them. So here we go. We're going to use our microfluidic chip to produce water droplets in oil. For starters, we're going to need to see what's happening in the chip. That means we need a microscope. Then, we're going to put the oil and water in using syringe pumps which control the flow rates of the liquids very precisely. A blue dye was added to the water so we can see it more easily. It's filtered to prevent impurities from clogging up the chip. Then, we'll connect the inlets to the two syringes and the outlet to a vial where we'll collect the droplets. Now everything's ready. We'll begin by sending the oil in. This is what's happening through the microscope. The oil pushes the air out of the channel it's filling up, and that's where the flow focusing will happen. We can see the oil arriving in the two lateral channels, then invading everything below, the channel where the water will flow, and above, the large chamber where we'll collect the droplets. Now that the oil has been taken care of, we just need to bring in the water. This is where the tubing connects with the channel, the water should be arriving any moment now, and there it is! We just need to get back to the area where it meets the oil, and we have our droplets! Okay, but microfluidics isn't just tiny, it's also often really fast. So fast, we don't have the time to understand what's happening at normal speed. So, let's use a high-speed camera. We can see that the oil is pinching the water, then separating a droplet, then another, then another, and so on hundreds of times per second. Another thing, the droplets don't merge with each other once they're formed because we added amphiphilic molecules. Basically, we added soap. These molecules like both oil and water. They're going to place themselves at the interface between the two liquids, which will allow us to keep our droplets. Then, what happens to our droplets after being created? They're going to travel in the chamber up to the chip's outlet. If we stop watching through the microscope, we can see this. And now, all that's left is to collect them in a vial. We wait an hour for the vial to fill up, drop by drop. And there we have it, we've got our micro droplets. Okay, and now why is creating micro droplets so interesting for research experiments or for industrial applications? The main point is that a drop is a small enclosed volume, that means we can easily manipulate it. For example, we know how to split a drop in two, or merge two drops, as shown here. That way, if we want to make two chemical components react, we can use very small volumes. They're well mixed quickly, which makes the reaction much more efficient. And by changing the flow rates of the liquids, we can vary their concentration from one drop to the next, which allows us to explore many different experimental conditions automatically. We also know how to put things inside a droplet, like cells for example. We can use the droplet as a carrier. A cell is placed inside, the droplet goes wherever we want, and the cell is released. The droplets can also be used as mini petri dishes, in which we can do cell culture. And lately, we've even been able to sort out droplets based on their color. But microfluidics isn't limited to droplets. Here's another chip, where this time the liquids won't be separated into droplets. We have three inlets. Water comes through the top and bottom channels, and blue-colored water comes through the middle. The channels meet up in a chamber in which an obstacle has been placed. This situation is quite ordinary, it's just water arriving from three different pipes onto an obstacle. But what happens isn't really intuitive. What we can immediately see is that everything is very calm. It doesn't look like there's any flow at all. The obstacle doesn't create any swirls and eddies. And lastly, it should mix, right? It's water all three times, it has to be miscible. And yet, each liquid stays in line, neatly separated from the others. All of that is characteristic of what we call a laminar flow. But in everyday life, we're more used to turbulent flows. If we place an obstacle in a channel, we see vortices downstream, and if we put food coloring in water, it mixes quickly with said water when we stir. Two physical quantities have a fundamental importance on the fluid's behavior. Viscosity, which is the ability to resist a flow, and inertia, which is the tendency to remain in its state of motion. If viscosity is more important than inertia, we're in a laminar regime. If it's the other way around, we're in a turbulent regime. And there are exactly three ways of making viscosity dominate over inertia. Choosing a very viscous fluid, going really slowly, or flowing through a tiny channel, which brings us back to microfluidics. Since in microfluidics, we're tiny by definition. 
That means viscosity always wins and all fluids flow in a laminar way. And in particular, they don't mix. At our scale, when we want to mix, we stir, but at the micrometric scale, we stretch. Here are three miscible liquids which flow next to each other. To mix them, we just need to stretch them, then fold them, then stretch them again, then fold them again, and so on and so forth. In fact, it's exactly like kneading bread, which is why this process is called the baker's transformation. In the end, we have a millefeuille with very thin layers where molecular motion is enough to finish the mixing. And that's the end of our microfluidics adventures. We hope we've given you a good overview of the stakes and the methods of microfluidics. We've yet to discuss current research topics in this field. If you're interested, watch the interviews we'll be putting up online in the next few months. And of course, if you like this video and don't want to miss the next ones, feel free to subscribe. And if you have anything to say about the video or its content, you can always leave a comment. Mm -hmm.